So my name is Lonnie Greenwald, and I'm a member of the Space City Chapter of the American High Business Society. The purpose of this video is to explore the different ways you can do hibiscus cutting to create new plants. There are three basic ways to recreate the parent plant. Air layering by cuttings and grafting. Today, we will concentrate on cuttings and the rooting hormone you can use to get the root. In the Hibiscus Handbook and asking growers questions about getting cuttings to root, most of the time the bottom line is to do them whichever way you feel comfortable with. There are numerous ways to get the cuttings to root and I will show you a few of the ways. One thing I wanted to cover is the rooting hormone. You would think that the higher the strength of the hormone, the better it would root. Well, I figured an experiment would be in order to find out. Uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, get your cuttings. And this plant I'm going to get these cuttings off of is a little hula. And uh, as you can tell, this thing needs some pruning. So what you do first is pick out a leaf where you want to cut it at. And if you want it growing in or growing out, you just pick the leaf the way you want the plant to grow. And you cut it just, just as close above that leaf as you can. This little stub here, if it was up here this long, would rot and then it's, it caused a problem. Next step, you have the branch already cut. You want to uh, trim the leaves. Up to about six, eight inches long. And then you can cut it and leave in one leaf or two. Big ones is better to just leave one right here at the top. So you cut it, go ahead and cut this one, and then you cut this one in half. To leave the leaf is so that these cuttings will uh, breathe while it's in the tray. Next we'll drop down to the bottom of it and always cut it at an angle like that and try to put it up at the leaf node right there. You see it? Right there at that leaf node that's the way I do it. Some people cut it straight across. I don't guess it really matters. Then you kind of skin it a little bit to get down to that cambium layer, the, the green part there. That's where the cutting will get its food. And also when you dip it in the rooting hormone, it get more uh, exposed so it, the hormone can get on in there. Now that the cuttings are trimmed and ready to go, for my rooting hormone, I've been putting it in an old pill bottle. Most all of us have some old pill bottles. It helps to label the bottle with a sharpie so that you don't get it mixed up with something else. Also, it's a good idea to not use the bottle with old hormone in it, as any disease or fungus can be carried to the cuttings. I put the cuttings in the hormone and knock it off on the side of the pill bottle so it'll get uh, any excess off of it. Next, I'll place the uh, cutting in the rubber dirt. Use rubber dirt because it seems to do the job. All it is is just a, uh, a medium to hold, you, hold your cuttings and, and to keep the base of it wet. Another uh, medium that you can use is Oasis Cube. You just, these here are too large. So I just quarter them like this. Use a pencil, put a hole in it for the cutting, and they'll fit right in my tray. Two things about the uh, Oasis cubes: one of them good, one of them bad. The good one is that they're a lot cheaper than the rubber dirt. The bad is you got to keep them uh, wet. If they ever dry out, they're just not much good. Another way to do your cuttings if you have a small amount is to get some plastic glasses from the dollar store, three, four dollars. Before I use the glass, I drill some small holes about three quarter inch from the bottom. That way I won't overfill when I put water in there. Next, I'll put about an inch and a half, two inches of perlite in the glass and add some water. With the cutting ready to go, I'll make a hole in the perlite with a pencil and place the cutting in the hole.
then tap it around, tap it down with your pencil, and that one's ready to go. Been told uh, that hibiscus loves company, so you can place as many as possible in the glass. You can use any size container that you want. Two problems with this method. One is that at a period of time, algae would appear. Also, when the cuttings are rooted, you will have to separate the roots, which are pretty tender and can be pretty tedious. Another way to grow your cuttings is to use a plastic box with lid that you can get from Walmart. Place enough water in the bottom of the box so that the rubber dirt in the tray will be about a quarter inch into the water. That way the rubber dirt will be able to wick up the water as needed. The condensation inside the box will help to keep the mo uh, cuttings moist. Two problems with a plastic box I've found. One is the algae again. Also the box needs to be level, otherwise one end will be dry and the other end too much water. To start I ordered some rooting hormone from Hormex to try the dry rooting powder. First is the number one strength, which is the weakest. You can probably uh, find this strength at Lowe's or Home Depot. Next is number three strength, which is a little stronger. And last of these rooting powders is number eight, which is the strongest of that pack. Formex has rooting powders all the way to number 48, which may be too strong for hibiscus. Next is dip and grow, which is a liquid. And the package it comes in is a mixing bowl. You pour the liquid into the line. Down here, the line's right in there. And fill the rest of the mixing bowl with water. Some growers use this with good results. The cutting would need to soak three to five seconds. Now I have Vitazine, which is weak fertilizer. Vitazine is also a liquid and it will produce roots in your cuttings. The way I do my cuttings is to put them in rubber dirt and then put them in a tray. The tray has six rows of 13 squares. For the rooting hormone experience, I used all Pride of Hankin, so there would be a constant with the cutting. The first row is Vitazine. The second tag has zero. This row has no hormone at all. Some people have told me and I've read that they don't use any hormone. So we'll see what happens with a zero. Third row is, is rooting hormone number one. The next row is the uh, rooting hormone number three. The next one is the dry rooting hormone number eight. And the last row is the dipping row. All right, this row here that we took out was the Vitazine row. And as you can see here, there's eight uh, cuttings that are rooted really, really good just in uh, four weeks, which is, you know, that's about a month ago is when we put them in there. Five of them showed some roots. There were a couple that had no roots. All right, we've uh, took out another row. This row was zero with nothing. No rooting hormone at all. And you can see we got seven here that's got pretty good roots. And we got six that uh, in the trays. Three of them or four of them had some roots showing. There was only about two that had no roots. So these look pretty good and this is just with nothing. All right, this row was number one, rooting hormone number one from Hormex. As you can see, there's quite a few uh, roots on it. And there's 10 plants. And there's three over there that uh, I didn't put out here. They got roots. They're just not very many, but these are rooted pretty good, being the number one. All right, it, uh, we pulled out all the uh, cutting in the next row. They're all Hormex number three. And you see all 13 of them's got root. The only one that's uh, behind is this one, and it's, it's got roots too. So that's, that's doing pretty good. Now this is uh, Hormex number eight rooting powder. 
As you can see, the roots are really, really coming out. This one is, oh my gosh, for a month, that is great. And we got some light ones right there, and one that's even less than that I put in the tray. So, uh, home mix number eight is looking pretty good. Now this is the last row. This one is using uh, dip and grow. As you can see, they're all coming out pretty good, too. There was one that didn't have any roots at all, but all the rest of these are looking really, really good. Those were the clippings that we did about a month ago, and now we're ready to do the uh, ones that are about two months old and just see what the difference would be. They should be ready for four inch pots now. This row was a by design, and uh, some of them look really good. As you can see, they're, they're ready for four inch pot. And some of them are still kind of slow. They just don't, uh, not quite there yet. You'll notice this tag has zero. So that means all these uh, cutting, uh, all 13 of them, has zero rooting hormone on it. I just did the cutting and, and put them in the rubber dirt. They all looking pretty good. As you can see there, there are plenty of roots that's ready for a pot. All except this one. This one, for some reason, has no roots at all. I don't know, some just act that way. Uh, these are uh, using the dry rooting hormone number one, and they're looking pretty good. The got one that's kind of dragging behind. But it, it looks pretty good. It got new leaves coming up and everything. Now we're on the road that has number three tag, which means that's a third uh, strength rooting hormone. As you can see on this one too, they're coming along really well. These are ready for a four inch pot. This one here is kind of dragging the back. Uh, it'll probably go back in the tray give it a little bit more growing time. Uh, now we're in row number eight with the eighth strength of horn mix. And you see here that these roots are strong and healthy. They are really ready to go. There's a few of them are just kind of not doing too good, but there's roots there. All right, on this um, bunch of cuttings, it's a dip and grow, and they are in pretty good shape. They got a lot of roots, as you can see, all except this one. I don't understand, don't have any roots. So it'll just have to wait a while. This one's got a few. So it'll just have to wait. I've uh, tried to show you how to get cuttings that will produce another plant, just like the parent plant. We started out with the uh, cuttings and the rubber dirt, the rooting hormone. Then uh, once they have roots on them and they're going pretty good, then you place them in the four inch pots. And when they get roots and they get going looking really well, then you put them in a gallon pot. Just keep increasing it. You don't want to put them right into the gallon pot because that'll be too large. Now we're coming towards the greenhouse and I'll show you how uh, I use this system to get these cuttings to root. This one here, it's called my sprinkler greenhouse. I have uh, cleaned it out yesterday so we don't have any plants in it yet. As you'll see, it's got these misters. It's got four on each level. And then it's got these uh, sprinkler heads in here. And they come off a tube that's down here at this distributor head. So there's four shells, they get plenty of water twice a day for two minutes. And now we're showing the uh, my other sprinkler greenhouse that's got the cuttings in it. It's a little bit smaller than the other one. It'll hold about eight trays. The larger one will hold 12 trays. I've got them covered up with plastic so it keeps the uh, humidity inside of it. And when you can take it open, you can tell the humidity and heat is just kind of like a jungle. Um, sometimes the heat in there be 100, 110 degrees. 
Now these are cuttings I, I've uh, done this last weekend and they're all looking pretty good in four inch pots. Far I've come to the conclusion that the rooting hormones are pretty close together. Whether using uh, the dry powder or the uh, dip and grow or by design, they all come out pretty close on the rooting part. The only thing I can really tell would be the time of year that you do the cutting. The hot part of the year seems to work a lot better. Thanks for uh, watching my video. It's another little greenhouse part I've got. And most of these plants in here came from cutting.